Now, one of the questions that I often get at the end, when we do question and answer, is what are your influences? What inspires you as a writer, as an artist? So I'm going to answer that a little early, if that's OK with you. I'm going to show you a couple of books that have meant something to me in my life. I'm sure you're going to know a few of them. This one was my favorite picture book when I was a kid. Who knows it? Of course, where the wild things are. I still love it. In fact, now that I'm older and I can read it and see the, what work went into it, I love it even more. You know how long that book is? Well, you know it's about 32 pages. How many sentences do you think it has? Let me give you a choice. Do you think it has 10 sentences, 70 sentences, or 300 sentences? Who thinks 10? Raise your hand. Who thinks 70? Who thinks 300? It has 10. It's so short, but we don't even realize it because it's so well done. And here's another book that I loved growing up. It's called The Mouse and the Motorcycle. You know that book? But you don't have that cover, right? Because they changed the cover. This is the cover that I had when I was a boy. But now they have a different cover. I still like my cover better, personally. Yeah, I like that cover. So, one of my all-time favorite books that I read as a child, I read it as a child, and then for a while I forgot about it. And then when I started to do this for a living, I, was, I looked it up again because I wanted to find it again. I didn't have my original copy. And I was so glad to find it. And I read it, and I read it eagerly. I was so excited to find it again. And then, well, let me show you that book and see if you know this one. Has anybody ever heard of a book called The Yeah! yeah. Creatures, right? Yes! So let me tell you a little story. When I was thinking about this book this summer, I realized that I didn't know much about the author, whose name is Edward Ormondroy. So I looked him up on the internet, like we all do these days, and I didn't find that much about him. So I decided to try to find him. I went to look for Edward, and I found him actually, and I somehow talked him into letting me interview him. And I put this interview on my blog, and one of the interesting things I found out about him is where he lives. Does anybody know where he lives? Where does he live? Uh-huh. You think he lives in Trumansburg? Uh, yeah. How do you know that? <laughs> okay. Well, not only does he live in Trumansburg, but he is sitting right over here. And he is my special guest, along with his wife, who some of you may know because she volunteers here, and his friend. And I wanted Edward to come here today because it was such a huge honor for me to meet an author that meant something to me when I was a boy. And I wanted to tell him publicly and in front of a group of people that also love your work how, that, how much that meant to me. So I'd like you all to give a round of applause. So you all just read David in the Phoenix, right? Yeah. Now you know why. That was not a coincidence. We asked you to do that. We then just don't read the book. So at the end, we're not going to just do questions for me. We're also going to have some questions for you, if that's OK. Just give you, I'll give you a little, I, won't, I won't call you up right now. I'll give you a little time to get ready. So influences matter. What you read now as a young person matters. You will still remember it when you're older. Let's move on. Now, I told you that I was here to talk about four things, and that two of those things were my jobs. We've talked about those. We have reached the second two things. So who can raise your hand and tell me what? So for our last segment, we have, we have five. five minutes. I would love to hear some questions. And if it's all OK with you, I would love you also to ask some questions. But Mr. Ermondroy, I know you just read his book. So you can ask questions to either one of us, but make sure you get him to. <laughs> yes? Speak up because I'm a little deaf. Yeah, you got to talk loudly. <laughs> Well, I didn't think of the phoenix. The phoenix is in mythology. <clears throat> it's a real bird in a make-believe world, like a centaur is a real beast in a make-believe world. And I just happened to think about using that bird in a different way. <clears throat> Long before the order of the phoenix, I might add. <laughs> Another question, yes? How many of these books did you write? I've written about 70, <laughs> but some of them are very short and very non-creative, let's put it that way. I had to do a lot of books on things that you, there are lots of books about already. 
like holidays or animals. I'm not telling you anything new in that book that you couldn't find in another book. I'm just telling it to you in that format. So that 70 sounds like a lot, but some of them are not. Some of them are not the kind of books that I'm writing now, let's put it that way. And Mr. Armandroid's written a good number as well. 14. 14. Okay, yes? What do you think your next book's going to be about? Well, I'm working on, speaking of mythical creatures, or I, should, I shouldn't say it that way, I'm working on a book about fairies. But it's a fairy story that really happened. I'll put it, let's put it that way. That's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, yes? My favorite book that I've written, I think, is Poison Steel, and then the Batman one will tie it. And I don't have a least favorite, but lots of the books I did at the beginning of my career were, like I was saying, not, I didn't have the room to be fully creative, so I wouldn't, they're not my favorites, but they're not, I don't, I don't have a negative view of them either. So who has a, who has a question for Mr. Ormondroid? Okay, this young man in the red sleeves. <laughs> we just talked about that. He's made varying accounts, 12 or 14. I think it's 12. <laughs> well, there are a couple that he wants to A couple like Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Very proud. Oh, okay. And Mr. Orange has written different types of books, novels that you know, and also picture books. Yes? Um, a question for both of you guys. Okay. Does your hands hurt from writing all those books? <laughs> this for both of us. Do our hands hurt from writing all those books? Yes. Do our hands hurt? From writing. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we usually use other things like computers or. He writes all his books by hand. Oh, he writes by hand. Yeah, I'm computer illiterate. <laughs> well, I know that you didn't email very much. <laughs> yeah. So does your hand hurt when you're writing longhand? Uh, it can, yes. If I, enough, if I write several pages, it begins to get Yeah. So you never use the typewriter? Oh, I uh, yeah. Well, I, I use a computer, so I'm using both hands, and I haven't had any problems yet. Any other questions? Well, another question for Mr. Armandred as well? Okay, yeah? How long have you been writing? Oh, my goodness. How long? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Uh, since Noah's landed. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote my first book in 1950, more or less. Yeah. Yeah, he's Mr. Orange has been writing um, he, he started writing this in nineteen fifty. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the book that the David the Phoenix that was took years. seven years to finally find a publisher. Did you hear that? Seven years to find a publisher for a book that we all love. Yes, this young man in the gray sleeves. Okay. The longest book that we've written. Castaways, perhaps? I don't, I don't, I don't really know. I'd have to look at the books and, and look at the last page. No. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not sure either, but I've written a book uh, that's called 365 Adventures, and that's, it has a bit of all. <laughs> But, you know, long is relative. It might be the longest in thickness, but it might not have the most words, because it depends on the size of the font. And it also could be in how long it took you to write it. Like I said, my Batman book and my Superman book, they're thin, but they've taken years to, all together to write. So in that sense, it's the longest. I will do a few more. We have a couple more minutes. This young lady in the pink? Um, it's for both of you. Okay. What's your favorite book by another author? Good question. Favorite My favorite? Oh, my gosh. I have so many favorites, it's hard to say. Do you mean a children's book? A favorite children's book? It doesn't really matter. Well, one of my favorite children's authors is an English writer named Arthur Ransom, who writes, wrote probably back in the 30s and 40s about English children who were having adventures in the English Lake District, sailing and camping and that sort of thing. I love him, and I still read him every once in a while. Um, and I showed you three of my favorites growing up, and there's many more. I'll just give you one more that I love. It was called The Cricket in Times Square. I love that book. All right. Would you 
two more or so? Two. Okay, let's do two more. Only if I haven't called on you yet, just to make it fair. Who have I not talked to? I don't think you've spoken. Um, it's for you. How, when did you start writing books? I started writing books when I was your age. We all do. Everybody's had my job. You all start off as writers and cartoonists. You all could be my competition. But not everybody sticks with it, right? You guys haven't all started to be doctors yet, or astronauts. You can't do that at this age. But you all can be writers. So that's when I was starting to get interested in it. But professionally, my first book was when I was 23 or 4. And I started drawing cartoons professionally when I was 26. So last question for now, but I'll tell you what we're going to do with the ones we don't get to. This young lady in the turquoise hat. Same question. We just talked about that, sweetie. I started when I was 20. Well, yeah, I didn't tell you how old I am. I started in 1996. And Mr. Roman has me beat by a couple years. <laughs> All right, one more quick question, because that one we already heard the answer to. Who have I not talked to? In the very back. Yes. Um, did you ever work on SpongeBob? I did not. Never worked with SpongeBob. I, I never did anything with SpongeBob. So you guys were a great audience. This was a big honor for me to be here. I'd like you to give a round of applause. For